Ukraine's operation failed badly, as their plan was destroyed by Russian forces. It's day 747 of Russia's operation in Ukraine. Let's dive deeper. Starting from the northern part of Ukraine. As I have said in one of my previous videos, battles fought here are different from the entire front. As both sides are using guerrilla tactics to inflict losses. As you know Ukraine for the past couple of months have been intensely shelling Belgorod and its surrounding region. Ukrainian sources claim they are targeting deployment points of Russian forces. However, Russian sources claim that is not the case. In response, Russian forces have increased their surveillance of Ukrainian movements. In addition, their DRGs frequently perform raids on Ukrainian targets. Many videos of these ambushes were shared by Russian special forces. However, this did not have any major effect on the situation, as the shelling continues. However, recently Ukraine tried to escalate things further. If you remember after losing Bakhmut, Ukrainian units launched an attack on Belgorod region. At first they were able to enter the Russian territory, but were soon pushed back by Russian forces. Latest report says Ukrainian forces were planning to perform a similar kind of operation. For this they were accumulating resources around Poltava, Kharkiv and Sumy. This includes several tanks, Western artillery, MLRS and armored vehicles. Apparently Ukrainian special forces were deployed to perform this operation. But as I have said earlier, due to shelling on Belgorod, Russian forces had increased surveillance on Ukrainian movements. As a result they were able to detect this accumulation of Ukrainian forces. So they decided to destroy the Ukrainian operation before it began. They started striking this accumulation with all types of ammunition. This includes Iskander missiles, FAB bombs, Lancet drones, and regular artillery. In fact, Russian sources shared a compilation of a few of these strikes. As a result, we can see Ukrainian forces suffering significant losses. Russian sources claim five tanks, three self-propelled howitzer, one MLRS and several IFVs were lost by Ukraine. In addition, Ukraine suffered around 70 losses in their power. Russian sources say, Ukraine was going to perform this attack in order to have an effect on the upcoming Russian election. He further added that more attempts like this are expected. Now moving to Avdiivka. As you know, this front was about to collapse, so Ukraine deployed significant manpower to this line to slow and hold Russian forces down. In fact, they have been counterattacking all these areas very intensely for the past several days. However, they were not able to push the Russian forces back. In the meantime, Russian forces continued to strike Ukrainian positions with FAB bombs and artillery. To reduce the usage of FAB bombs, Ukraine deployed many Western air defense systems around this area. At Berdichi, Ukraine had the most success. After the counterattacks, they were able to push Russian forces to the eastern outskirts of the village. However, this came at very high price, as they lost several Abrams and Bradleys. Some Russian sources say, as a result Ukraine's 47th Brigade that was performing this attack, once again changed their commander. Now moving to Toninki. Here Russian forces performed a very good maneuver. As you know Ukrainian forces after their counterattack, were able to push Russian forces to the outskirts. Since then Russian forces were not able to advance, as they were pinned down. So they decided to advance from Olivka, where Ukrainians were not able to push them back. They started attacking along this road towards Ukrainian forces' rear. As the risk was too high, Ukrainian forces withdrew to the northern outskirts of the village. Subscribe for more frontline updates. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.